So the first thing we need to do before exporting is doing a bit of mesh prep. So HardOps and Box Cutter will use to create this piece. As you can see, it still has lots of modifiers attached to it, such as booleans and bevels. For us to export this, we're going to need to bake the data into the mesh. We'll do this by going up to Object, Apply, and picking Visual Geometry to Mesh. Next, we'll also apply the scale. You could apply all transforms, but we'll just do the scale for now. It's very important that you at least apply the scale for UV purposes. Finally, we'll add a new material and give it a name, like matte for material, and we'll just pretend that this is a beacon. So now we can actually add some UVs to this. So just keep in mind that this type of UV projection shouldn't be used for final production model, nor is it very efficient. We're just using this strictly for viz dev and prototyping, as it just gives us something to work with within Painter. In a later video, we'll spend a little bit more time laying out a more optimized UV sheet. With the mesh selected, we can go to Edit, go to Face Mode, and choose Select All. We'll hop over to the UV tab and choose Smart UV Project. Now the important setting that we want to adjust in this projection mode is the margins. For now, we're going to put a value of 0 0.02 to give us adequate padding between the islands. Now if you want to learn more about edge padding for textures, you can easily look up edge padding on the Polycount Wiki. We'll hit OK and go back to object mode, and that's it. We've got some quick and dirty UVs on this model, and it's time to export. With the object selected, go to File and Export as OBJ. We can leave all the settings as default, but make sure to choose Selection Only. That way it won't export any garbage that we don't want. Go to Good Name in a folder where you won't forget, and just hit Export OBJ. Here we are in Painter. We'll go to File, choose New. We're just going to leave everything as default. Go to File Select and just choose our exported OBJ. We'll just hit OK, and it looks like our mesh imported well. And if we look up top, our material name also came through. Now every time you load up a new project for Substance Painter, the first step is to always go to Texture Set Settings and scroll down to Bake Mesh Maps. The only thing we'll adjust for now is the output size, which will change to 2048, and we'll just hit Bake. What it's doing now is creating all the mesh data used for smart materials. Notice the ID map failed. That's not really a problem since we aren't using a high to low bake here. For testing purposes, I always like to toss on a smart material just to make sure everything is working correctly. I like to use the steel painted from the shelf. We'll just drag and drop that onto the mesh. This is a good test to see how our UV projection worked. All I'm looking for right now is just some good edge work because Everybody likes a good damaged edge. So take some time to spin around the model, roll the light around by shift right clicking, just to see how things are. We can now also export our maps. So we're just gonna go to File, Export Textures, choose a directory, and now depending on our target render, the config is very important. We'll choose PBR Metal Rough, since we're rendering an EV, and as soon as that's done, we'll just hit Open Folder to ensure all our maps have been exported. All right, so let's get our textures hooked up. To make our life a little bit easier, we'll be using the Node Wrangler add-on, which comes with Blender. To enable it, just go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node Wrangler and Enable. Let's jump on over to the Shading tab. Make sure your object is selected, and if the shading area is set to World, just change it to Object to modify the meshes material. Now we can manually add each texture map to its correct slot, but with the Node Wrangler enabled, the hotkey to remember is Control shift t which will bring up our file window. So just go in and select all exported textures except for the emissive, since we haven't worked on that yet. So at this point, we'll just set up a simple environment for our render. The key to getting the textures to work correctly is having a proper HDRI map. Let's switch to EV and switch the shading area to World. This allows us to edit the environment settings. I'll hit Shift A, do a search for environment texture, and plug it into the background. Now everything looks pink because we don't have a map plugged in. I highly recommend you download some free HRIs and place one into your scene. So the reason why we're doing this is when we have any reflective surfaces, if the world is empty or pitch black, you won't see the reflections simply because it has nothing to reflect. Now our beacon is hanging out on the Barcelona rooftop. It looks pretty cool. Now the next steps are totally up to you on how you want to set up your render. I'll adjust the background brightness a bit. 
and add a plane, scale it up, add a material to the floor and adjust the color and roughness values. Let us add a simple sunlight, pick a low angle so we can evaluate our textures, go to the camera view and just frame the scene. And lastly, I'll enable contact shadows on the sunlight. So now that we have everything set up, we'll get rid of the default material and start working back and forth between Painter and Eevee to make a more interesting set of textures.